Yes, yeah, so we're going to head for Houghton Lake and talk to a gentleman who's made an impact in the music industry uh, way back in the early 50s, for Elvis Presley anyway. He wrote Elvis Presley's first gold record, which was Heartbreak Hotel. Which sold millions. Millions. And, and still does. Right. And uh, Tommy was telling me, Tommy Durden, the author, that it's still paying the rent. Let's go to Houghton Lake now. Okay. On the sleepy shore of Houghton Lake in Roscommon County, nestled in the northern Michigan woods, lives a humble man and his devoted wife. A man who was born the youngest of seven children to a cotton sharecropper in Morgan County, Georgia. From those modest early days, this man went on to make music his life's ambition. Through the years, he's written dozens of songs and performed side by side with some of the top names in the music business. Steel guitarist by trade is what paid the bills those early days. But what happened around 1955 is what pays the bills today. Well, since my baby left me, well, I found a new place to dwell. Well, it's down at the end of Lonely Street, that heartbreak hotel. Well, I think it's a lonely baby. Well, I'm so lonely. I was working with a group, Smiling Jack Herring and his swing billies. Uh, I played steel guitar, or did until I gave it up and sing and uh, we were working on a radio station there and working out playing dances at different places and i got the miami herald every morning i'd read the herald and i saw this little item one day that a man had killed himself and all he left in the way of a suicide note was i walk a lonely street and that just struck me as being very uh very lonely. He must have been extremely lonely. So I started working on that idea and I knew May Axton. She was a school teacher and uh, songwriter and also did some public relation work for uh, Grand Ole Opry shows including Tom Parker and Oscar Davis, the groups that he would bring in. So Tom Parker was uh, Elvis's manager then? He was. He just uh, just taken over as Elvis's manager and had engineered the deal to the RCA to buy his record contract from Sam Phillips of Sun. So I took my idea to Jacksonville. I was working a television show at the time on a Saturday out of Jacksonville. And I'd go up from Gainesville and every weekend stay with my brother. A bunch, bunch of relatives in Jacksonville still. And I went up there, and I went over to May's house, and I told her, I said, I have a good, good idea for a good blues, but I need some help, and I think that you and I can do it. So we sat, she sat down at the piano, and I walked around, walked around, and in less than half an hour, we had the song. Mm -hmm. And we had a friend of ours named Glenn Reeves make a dub on it. He can sing, he could sing a lot like Elvis, so he kind of did a halfway Elvis imitation on the dub so you on had tape. Elvis in mind when you were doing that? Absolutely. Stuff. We had Elvis in mind. And she knew him. She had met him through her work with Colonel Tom and Oscar Davis. Mm -hmm. And that was in probably in September or of 55. And she was going to the DJ convention in Nashville in October. So we made arrangements for her to get the song to Elvis, or she did make arrangements. and. Uh, I told her that I thought it would be a good idea if she could get it to Elvis. And it was his first release on RCA, if he liked it well enough mm -hmm. and accepted it, to give him a third of the writer's royalties on it. So it would be three of us on it. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it went down, just as planned. Even though Heartbreak Hotel was Tommy's one and only big hit, he still draws crowds locally at concerts and has a loyal area following. One major achievement Tommy has accomplished recently was the completion of his first album. But all my life I wanted to do a gospel album, and so I finally I just saved up a little money and went to Nashville and recorded an album of all the old gospel songs. Tommy's retirement is a working retirement with frequent trips to Nashville. He still writes solo and with May Axton. One of his most recent projects is with Ernie Harwell, voice of the Detroit Tigers, which we'll learn more about in another visit with Tommy Durden on Michigan Magazine. <laughs> 